Hello and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. I'm Ken and Profit. In this video, we're going to use geometry nodes to add wind to our grass. In this example, you can make your own grass, of course, or you can download my grass pack. Link will be in the description. For now, let's jump into geometry nodes inside of Blender and make some windy grass. All right, so to apply the wind to your grass scene, you of course need some grass. And I have a tutorial on making a grass clump like this, complete with a procedural shader that uh, really holds up even close up. It looks pretty good. It's very effective for a cycles render. Uh, so you can go ahead and make your own or, you know, shameless plug, download my pack. Uh, like I said, I've just updated this. So if you download this whole pack, you'll get these flowers and mushrooms, some uh, unique twig assets, and then there's several rocks, also just some kind of green generic uh, foliage plants. So uh, that's all included. If you're a member of my Patreon, you get this automatically. So all the links will be in the description. Check that out. But the point is you need some grass clump assets. Either make it yourself, download some, and we can uh, use this to scatter in our geometry node setup and apply the wind. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to choose a few of these grass clumps right here to apply our wind. Uh, so I'll just move this to a new group. I'll call it Windy Grass and I can just disable everything else. We don't need it. So first of all, what we want to do is apply kind of a small level of noise to each of these clumps. And then we're going to take that and instance it on our ground plane, just a, a pretty simple scatter setup in GeoNodes. And then we're going to add kind of a bigger wavy noise to the entire scatter. So I'm going to grab one clump here and go into geometry nodes. And I'll just frame this up by pressing period. And I'm going to create a new GeoNodes network. And we'll name this Wind Small. Uh, this is applied to the grass asset itself. And this is a very simple setup. The first thing we're going to do is drop in a set position node because we're going to uh, transform the displacement of this grass. And we're going to do this with a noise texture. So I'm going to drop in a noise texture. But we want it to be a 4D noise texture because we want access to this seed value right here. Now let's take the color output of this into the offset. We've probably done this multiple times and you can see we are getting some displacement on the grass, but it's looking really wonky here. We wanna offset that so that it stays to its local transforms. And the way we can do this is just with a vector math node, drop that in and we can subtract by 0.5 on all axes on the X, Y, and Z. And that gets it, if we mute this node, that gets it snapped back down to its local transforms. So if we mute the set position, you can see we're just displacing uh, the asset itself. All right, so that fixes the displacement issue there. Now we want a node to decide how much of that displacement we want on our grass. And uh, we can use the same vector math node, just shift D, duplicate it. Instead of subtract though, we're gonna set this to multiply. Unmute our set position node. And there we go. Now we have kind of a multiplying factor of how much windy noise is being applied to the grass there. The issue now is obviously that uh, we don't want any noise displacement down here at the bottom of our grass. We want to kind of have a gradient sealing off the bottom half of our grass asset. I'm going to uh, close out our spreadsheet here. Don't really need that. Give us some more space. And uh, this would be a good time to apply the geo node setup to all your other grass assets as well so that you can kind of adjust the gradient and have it work for all of them. What you can do is just go through, grab all of these nodes, Shift select the last node, control L, copy modifiers. And that'll copy since geometry nodes, if you look at the modifiers panel, it shows up that when small shows up as a modifier now, now it's applied to all of these other assets as well. Okay, so now we're editing all of them. They all have the wind small geo node setup applied to each of those. So I mentioned we need a gradient in order to sort of section off the bottom half of the grass. So let's drop in a gradient texture node. And if we control shift click view our geometry and then control shift click view our gradient, um, you can see that our gradient is kind of moving left to right. And uh, we want the exact opposite of that. We want it going from bottom to top. So uh, we can adjust this with a rotate vector node and feed that into the vector of the gradient. And we need a vector to rotate on. So let's get the position of the asset. So drop in a position node and plug that into the factor or the vector of the rotate vector. And uh, which axis do we want to rotate? We want the Y, so we can rotate that by 90 degrees. And now you can see uh, we have this ever so slight gradient 
going from bottom to top. And so now what's great about this is we can use a color ramp node to sort of adjust the amount of this. So we can kind of slide it down. And what you're doing here is effectively saying, okay, and anywhere that's black, we don't want the noise to be applied. Uh, and we want it to just be applied to this area up here. All right. So uh, let me just delete that viewer node. How do we get this gradient to um, actually be the factor of what's displaced and what's not? Well, we can actually duplicate this math node again, uh, but this time we're gonna set this to scale, which is a very handy value. And uh, this gives us, you know, we can set this to zero. There's no displacement and we can crank it up and there's a lot more displacement. But uh, we actually wanna use this to decide what is zero and what is one. So the black value should be zero and the white value gets closer to one. So let's take the color output of our gradient into the scale. And there you go. You can see we've sectioned off the bottom part of the grass. And now uh, you have kind of visual representation of what is displaced. You know, if you want to reverse it, you can see what's going to be displaced and what's not. And now if you adjust kind of how much is multiplied here, you can see the effect we're having. Now, uh, you could also shift D duplicate this scale node and increase the displacement just with this scale value. And that might be cleaner, especially if you wanna make a tool out of it, you can uh, adjust the overall displacement. Once you've sectioned off the gradient, you can do that with this value here. That's pretty much the setup. Now, if you notice, if we press play, nothing happens. Uh, we need this to be animated. There's a few different ways you could do that. Uh, the simplest is probably a scene time node. So if I drop in a scene time node, I can take this seconds output and just feed it directly into the W of this noise texture. Remember, we're using a 4D noise texture. It gives us access to that seed value. And basically what this seconds output is going to do is randomize the seed value of this noise texture so that when we press play, look at that, we have animated displacement. Pretty simple. And now it's just a matter of dialing in this noise texture value. So if we uh, control shift click view our geometry and then control shift click again, view our noise texture. So let's say if you crank it up to 50, you know, you get way more smaller noise because that black and white value is, I don't know if you can see it, but we can crank up the roughness and get much crunchier values here. Uh, if you want just kind of a smooth warble, take the scale down and the detail down as well. And you might also take the roughness down. And now if we press play, you can see you get just a very gentle sort of swaying back and forth. You can increase the distortion. You get some more distortion applied. Uh, let me delete this viewer node, kind of see what we're doing here. So this would probably work better for if we were doing sort of the field, the entire field, just sort of a gentle swaying back and forth. We probably want something a little bit bigger, so I might do a scale value of around two just to get some more noisy crinkling in there. Could turn up the detail a little bit, but remember um, the details you're gonna get a little bit sharper of a breakup. So what I like to do is set the detail to about one, the roughness to about a 0.2, distortion about a 0.5, and the scale, let's go, let's go a little bit higher on the scale, do a three. With that sort of jittery amount set, I can then adjust this scale node here, set it to zero, I get no noise happening, and I can kind of play with this timing a little bit. So now it's looking more like the wind is sort of rustling my individual grass blades. Now, of course, this is customizable. You can do a lot more with this, but that's just sort of the basic setup of uh, getting a little bit of windy noise in the individual grass clumps. Now let's move on to a setup where we can get more sort of a, a field of grass. So what I'm going to do is just hide this group for now and I'll press shift A and drop in a plane and scale this up and I'll control A apply the scale of that and I'm going to drop in a geo nodes network and I'm actually just going to grab that wind small geo node setup that we just made and I'm going to duplicate it and I'll name this wind large. It's very important that you duplicate it <laughs> uh, using this you want to make sure you have wind small, wind large, because if you just edit the one uh, on the ground plane, then you'll be affecting the individual grass clumps that we just set this on. We can take this whole setup and apply it to our scatter. So let me go ahead and just disable this set position for now. 
and we want to uh, scatter those grass clumps onto this plane. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A and do a distribute points on faces node. Get a bunch of points in there. I like to use poison disk and we can take the factor down. And now I'm going to do a simple instance on points node and drop that in. And we need a collection to instance. So let's grab that windy grass collection. Remember this has our collection of grass assets that already have their own set of individual noise applied. And let's feed that into the instances. We want to do check pick instance. Set this to separate children, reset children, and relative. And now we have it picking each individually, randomly picking uh, those individual grass clumps right there. Let's do a little bit of setup on this instance for some random scale and random rotation. So let's do a few random value nodes. The first one can be a float. I'll do a value of 0.1 for a minimum and 1.5 for a max and just feed that into the scale. So now we get some randomized scale on our grass. You can, of course, go crazy with this. I'll shift D duplicate that random value node, set this one to vector, and the minimum value is zero on the X, Y, and Z. And so we want the maximum value on the X and the Y to both be zero. We don't need any rotation on that. Uh, but the Z, we can have this be uh, infinite rotation on the Z. And then we'll take that into the rotation so now they're all rotated randomly from 0 to 360 on that grid. Okay, and then we have a nice factor slider. We can adjust the uh, amount there we have on our field. Now if we press play, these are all animated because we applied noise individually to them. And you could stop there, you know, get a little bit of noise, just a little bit of keep alive on your field of grass. Uh, but there is obviously, depending on how many different grass clumps you have, you might notice some repetition. Um, and we want this to be more of a field of grass where we can kind of notice wind sort of passing through the entire ground plane of grass. So we can take this exact noise setup and just modify it a bit to be a bit larger noise scale. Now on our ground plane here, if I go to edit mode, we want to subdivide this, get some geometry in here so that we can see our noise texture displayed. I'll just crank up the subdivisions of this. It's not actually necessary for the scatter, but I want to illustrate how we can view our texture here. So let me control shift click our group input. This is viewing our ground plane and then control shift click that noise texture. So now we can see the noise applied to the ground plane. And remember, we're working on the wind large setup that's applied to the scatter. Okay, so now we can adjust this noise texture and kind of see where the wind pattern is gonna be blowing. So you want this to be fairly a fairly large setup so something, uh, a small number like a 0 0.1. I don't want a lot of detail and I don't want a lot of roughness in there, but I do um, want a bit more distortion, something like that. So that's gonna be the noise pattern applied to this overall ground plane. I want it to be kind of big, more like wind moving through a field. So the individual grass clumps, you probably want this noise to be a bit noisier, a bit crunchier, smaller. When you get to the overall ground plane, you want it to kind of be a bigger noise pattern. So uh, that's just a helpful way to sort of visualize the noise we're going to apply to our scatter here. And uh, I can delete that node. Now if we unmute this set position node, we'll have, okay, so let's mute it again. Make sure our noise is still working from the individual clumps. Right? You can zoom in and see the wind on the grass. And now if we unmute this set position node, uh, nothing changed. And that's because these are all just instances. So this noise isn't really working on anything. We need to realize the instances here. So after our instance on points, make sure you drop in a realize instance node. And now if you play, it should slow down a good bit, but you should see that sort of bigger noise motion applied to the entire field, as well as your individual noise here. And if we want to get crazy with it, we can crank up the scale to kind of really illustrate it. So let me crank this power up to five. And there you go. You're seeing that this noise pattern, if I can come back to here. You're seeing this right here be affected directly onto our grass. So if you pay attention, let me delete that viewer node. You can see how there's displacement happening right here on our grass. And it's keeping sort of the root stuck to the ground because we have the same color ramp node here. So if you sort of fade that out down, you can get a little closer to the root. 
like so and adjust this accordingly. Remember it's additive, it's applying the noise on top of the noise we already set. So you're getting sort of this wavy noise pattern and uh, you know it's not playing in real time but you're getting this wavy noise pattern on top of the little crinkled up noise that you already got. You can adjust the scale, the roughness and all of that um, but then remember we set this vector math node to be the scale so you can kind of dial back how intense that is so that it doesn't look uh, too extreme and then there you go uh, maybe let's see because I'm recording so this is sort of chugging a bit but if we take the density down oh and another thing you could do this collection right here these all have subdivision on them so you could turn the subdivision off uh, if you want to speed up your viewport let me just do that turn the subdivision off of each of these and that'll kind of uh, make it you know it's sharper crunchier but it might look better from a distance and it also plays a lot smoother so now you're getting the effect in real time a bit better there's crinkle wind motion individually on them and then there's also sort of this large scale wind passing through and we can crank up that value here remember if you go too big it's too sweepy it starts to look sort of like underwater so all of these settings are you know maybe you want it underwater maybe it's seaweed <laughs> all these settings you'll want to adjust to your particular scene to kind of pull off uh, the desired effect but this is sort of just the the simple node setup that I found that really works and if you think about layering the noise on top of noise you, you know you can add even more if you want different noise patterns different wind blowing through a field of grass but this was a setup that I found that you can kind of see the wind is sort of affecting this section over here differently from this section it feels more like nature rather than just all one consistent noise pattern and then uh, when you really crank up the density factor of all of this you know that's when it really starts to shine you really start to get something that looks like wind passing through a field of grass so there you go, very simple node setup. I hope this was useful. Hopefully you can use it to make some cool nature scenes. Uh, this was actually a requested tutorial by someone in the comments. So thanks so much for leaving the comments. I read all of them. So drop a comment if you found this useful. And um, if you wanna download this file, you can grab it from my Patreon. Thank you to all my Patreon members. Uh, you guys have really showed up to support uh, ever since I launched Patreon. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And uh, grab this file, grab that ground foliage pack, and uh, make some awesome stuff with it. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.